First of all, I would like to thank Islamic uh, Circle of North America, ICNA, uh, for hosting this very, very important uh, annual convention and also for um, addressing the issue of uh, racism in America historically and currently and how this issue affects all of us as Americans, as Muslims, and as human beings. So, brothers and sisters, uh, this is a very important conversation to have among Muslims. Um, I know it is easy to point the finger on the past and talk about others, and of course there's a lot of work that has been done for decades, if not for centuries, on the issue of racism, the origin of the issue of racism, and how it impacts lives, how it impacts societies, and how it impacts all of us as citizens. But let me also tell you that this should be as a reminder to Muslims before it serves as a reminder to others that the Muslim voice, the Muslim role, is missing from this debate and this conversation over the issue of racism in America. I know that some of us are deeply involved in this issue, and that's the way it should be, but the majority of Muslims here and around the world should pay close and very close at attention to the issue of racism social injustice and social inequality. And let me just remind myself and all of you that this issue is so central to Islam. It is a foundational belief and value in Islam, the issue of justice and the issue of equality. This is not a tactical statement. This is not a convenient position that people take when it becomes trending to talk against racism, but within Muslims, it should be trending in our hearts and our minds as long as we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as we believe that we have the obligation to stand up for justice. And let me just remind you that our faith is based on social justice. Our, our faith is based on equality. Our, our faith celebrates diversity. Our faith does not just tolerate people who are different, but it is a matter of faith to recognize that we are equal before God and we should be equally treated and we should command justice and fight injustice anywhere and whenever it raises its head. Brothers and sisters, I spoke a few weeks ago at the university about the issue of normalization of hate. And several people were surprised that that's how Islam thinks about the issue of racism and social inequality. And the biggest surprise was, where is the Muslim activism? Where is the Muslim voice? Why don't we see the Muslim community in the four front, defending the rights of others. And that underlines the fact that Muslims, and Muslims in America in particular, have been distracted fighting their own fights. It is an important duty for us to defend our rights, but it is more duty on us to defend the rights of others. And that is the Islamic principle, and that is an Islamic value, and that is a human universal Islamic obligation on all of us. So brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in uh, chapter 49, 31, the famous ayah that we cite in settings, O mankind, we have created you from a single male and female, and we made you into nations and tribes so that you know one another. The most honorable of you in the sight of God is the most righteous. 
يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم أن الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة 30 آية 22 ومن آياته خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف ألسنتكم وألوانكم إن في ذلك لآيات للعالمين And among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the diversity of your languages and your colors. Indeed, in that are signs for those of knowledge. So these are Islamic values. But at the same time, let's also remember that when we talk about the original sin, America's original sin of racism, let's also educate ourselves and remind ourselves and others that this was the problem of Iblis. The problem of Iblis was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the angels to prostrate to Adam, the angels prostrated except for Iblis. Iblis refused the order to prostrate for Adam to Adam and their justification was Ana Khairun Minhu. I am better than him. Iblis said, You created me from from fire and you created him from clay. Iblis thought that he is privileged. Iblis thought that the way he is, the way he was created, it should be recognized as better than others were created. So that is the original sin, that Iblis had a complex. He has a false sense of identity towards others. And that is the problem with white supremacy. Not only today, not only two years ago, not only a few months ago, but for centuries. This is the issue of racism. When people feel that they're entitled to be prejudiced against others, when people believe that their skin color is a privilege, when they believe that their, their birth of place, uh, of play, uh, their birth of, pra- uh, uh, birth of place is an entitlement. When they believe that their social status, their last name, their height, are accomplishments, these have nothing to do with you. These have nothing to be proud of. What you should be proud of is what you do for yourself and for others in terms of service. And that is the problem, the problem of privilege, the problem of entitlement, just because of you, how you were created, what skin, what skin color you have, what last name you have, where you were born. These are the problems that humanity failed to understand and to appreciate. So brothers and sisters, America had the problem of Iblis centuries ago. People who fail to appreciate that diversity should be leveraged, should not be punished. That diversity should be a reason for cohesion and learning how to co- coexist and learn from each other and appreciate each other. The failure to understand and appreciate this diversity has led to suffering, conflict, and wars on the loss of lives millions of lives, hundreds of millions of lives throughout history. Slavery did not start with just bringing people in chains from Africa and other places into America, South America, North America, and other places. It started when people had this Iblis problem, appreciating themselves over others because of their skin color. That is the the failure of humanity and has caused the human being to suffer for centuries unjustly. It has been accompanied by a culture of justification of racism and prejudice against others. We have seen the Holocaust. The Holocaust did not start with burning people to death, with executing them because of their faith. It started with the humanization of people in the media, with with the normalization of discrimination, with being complacent about being prejudiced and spreading rumors and conspiracy theories against people. Rwanda, 
800,000 people were killed. Just the, the, the same color, but different social status and ethnicities. It was a genocide. It was based on false sense of superiority. Bosnia, hundreds of thousands of people were killed just years ago, just because of the false sense of superiority. And prejudice and discrimination against African Americans is still alive today and has not disappeared. And don't get this false impression that there is no racism in America today because we have a great nation, we have a great system of laws. It is institutional, it is intersectional, it is deep in our society, and your voice is needed. And we Muslims have to stand up. <laughs> have to stand up, not because it affects us as Muslims, because we have sisters and brothers in the African-American Muslim community who all of them have paid the way, the way for all of us to enjoy the rights that we, we enjoy today. But it is the right thing to stand up. When we see injustice, it is not about the injustice that inflicted on the victims. It becomes about you. When you witness in, an injustice, it becomes about you, not the victims. And you have to stand up. Not because it might be unpopular and you're afraid, or you only speak up when it's convenient and when it's acceptable when it is popular. That is not the sense of truthfulness as Muslims and the sense of justice. It is when it is hard that you step forward and you become unpopular and you speak loud and you take action to prevent justice from prevailing. That is the challenge for Muslims today is to move away from the comfort zone and fight the fight of other people because it is our fight, brothers and sisters. Black Lives Matter, it is not only the fight for African Americans, it is the fight for Muslims, it is the fight for Christians, it is the fight for Christ uh, uh, Jews, it is the fight of everyone. Black Lives Matter is our matter. Blacks, like, Black Lives Matter should be a concern for all of us, and we should be in the front line. We should not just post on it on social media without being there in the protest when we see police abusing people. And we have to organize. I'm so happy to see people in our community rising to the occasion, like Sister Linda Sarsour, like Imam Omar Suleiman, like Imam Suhaib Webb. But they should not be alone in this fight. You should join. And don't wait to be led. You be the leader and speak out. Brothers and sisters, this is a defining moment, not only for our nation, but for us as Muslims. We have been getting probably the worst of racism in the past two years. We know that the last election was not about hope, was not about constructive vision. It was about fear, fear-mongering and mobilizing fear. It was about playing with the emotions of angry America. It was about playing with the emotions of legitimate concern about the economy. And we Muslims have to pay, pay attention to those people who are angry in our society. And we cannot just point the finger to those who are angry and just accuse them of being racist. Not everyone who voted for this president is racist. Not everyone who voted for this president is anti-immigrant. There are legitimate concerns among those people who are afraid and they went and voted because they, they care about the economy, they care about their social status, and they care about their future. We have to be fair. But those who voted because of prejudice, because of white supremacy, because they want to empower hate, and yes, hate has been empowered recently, we have to push back. We have to push back by being organized, by being vocal, by being present, by being courageous, by being true to our faith as Muslims, by being faithful to America. We should not only focus on 
the angry America. The angry America has been there for centuries, and we have seen the results. But we are here today because of the good and compassionate America, brothers and sisters. We are here because we are inspired by, tho by those who fought for you and I to be here, by, by, by the leaders, the Martin Luther King Jr., the, the, the Malcolm X, the Rosa Parks, the current leaders in the civil rights movement. We are here because of the suffering and sacrifice and the struggle of millions of people over centuries. That's why America is good. And that's why we have laws that protect the rights of all. The good America that I subscribe to, brothers and sisters, is the America that on November 9th, people went to the streets and they said, we're all Muslim today. When there was a threat of Muslim registry, people went to the street and say, I am a Muslim today. Register me first. This is the good America that I believe in and I subscribe to. The good America that when the Muslim ban was announced, thousands of Americans, good Americans, the majority of them who are not Muslim, rushed to airports to go there and defend the rights of Muslims to come to America. That is the good America. The good America that I believe in is that when, the, when, when bikers, armed bikers, protested in front of a mosque in Arizona, they were outnumbered. They were outnumbered by hundreds of, of, of decent Americans who went in front of the mosque to protest that prejudice against the Muslim community. The good America that I believe in is when Jewish cemeteries were desecrated and Jewish centers received threats. The Muslim community was the first to organize and raise funds for the Jewish community to tell it that we are together, we have your back. Brothers and sisters, this is the good America that we should focus on. This is the good America that we believe in. They defend us, we defend them, we defend everyone, because everyone who needs us, we are there for them. And that is the Muslim duty. And that is the defining moment for the Muslim community. We stand up for justice, because not just because we are afflicted by injustice, because we believe that standing up for justice for ourselves and others is the right thing to do, even if it is costly. And just my final reminder. I am afraid that the original sin of America will be transferred to Muslims that Muslims will have their own sin of being absent from debates, from being absent when they have to speak up and defend others and work with others. I am afraid that Muslims will take that sin by being complacent, by being indifferent, by being silent. And I remind myself and all of you, it is your fight. It is your future when you see injustice. And let me just conclude by saying what Martin Luther King said. He said, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum.